Hey everybody, it's Rebecca from DevourDinner.com and welcome to my kitchen. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. This is going to be so much fun and I'm really excited to do this for you. This is just going to be a fun time, so welcome. When you come in, don't hesitate to say hello. Tell me where you're from. If you're a newcomer and you've never joined before, welcome. Feel free to follow me um, on my Facebook page, Devour Dinner. I appreciate that. That's where you'll get all the new notifications for new recipes and everything that goes on, as well as the future lives for the following Sundays. So welcome, welcome. Hello, Jennifer. Merry Christmas. Hello, Gail. You guys are fantastic. Okay, I'm going to put over here in the comments... And I'm going to put it in a bunch of times because I know it scrolls, um, as those of you who are coming on. Today we're going to make hot chocolate bombs. Now, you've seen them all over in the Facebook groups. People are trying them, they're testing them, they're showing pictures, and there's not a lot of description to how to do it, right? Um, and so because of you guys requesting it, I'm doing it for you today. Um, and it's a lot of fun and I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that I've learned so that you guys can be successful and you can do this at home. It's not hard. It's a lot of fun. You're going to end up licking your fingers because you're going to get chocolate everywhere, but it's fabulous. So keep some wash rags so you can wipe your hands, all that good stuff. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, Stacy, Debbie, Louise, Sandy, Kathy, Shelly, Peggy, Vicki, Michelle, Linda, D, Sally, Sigrid, Stacy, you guys are fantastic. All right, so I've dropped the link once, but I'm going to drop it again. We're going to get going on this because this recipe is really in-depth. Um, it doesn't use a lot of ingredients, but there's a lot of steps to it that can seem kind of confusing, but it's really not. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our Instapot and I'm going to set it to saute because, of course, we're going to melt chocolate using the double broiler. You guys have seen me do this before. You remember last week I made peanut clusters. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and some fudge. Um, it's a wonderful way to melt chocolates easily. And you guys know I love it. Um, so we're going to be melting some chocolate. To do that, you're going to put about two to three cups of water in the liner, okay? And then you're going to take chocolate chips. Now, because we're making hot cocoa bombs and we're gonna put this into milk, use good quality chocolate. I can't emphasize this enough. Do not use a chocolate flavored chip. Those are waxy. They're not gonna give you the rich cup of hot cocoa that you're looking for. Um, you can use Milk chocolate, semi-sweet, um, a bittersweet if you don't like it as sweet, but you like that chocolate. So today, um, I'm using a milk chocolate, and I've done both, a milk and a semi-sweet, um, and I've gone back and forth. So I'm using, this is what I'm using today, um, and we're going to get this heating up. To make the double broiler with our pressure cooker or our Instapot, you want a glass bowl. The glass bowl needs to be bigger in diameter than your pressure cooker. So this is a six quart, but you might be using an eight quart. You need to make sure your glass bowl is bigger because you want it to sit up. You see how that sits up? Just a little tip there. So I've started with just one bag um, in here. I'm going to go ahead and add more because we're going to need it. And I'll add a little bit more as we go along. The neat thing about melting chocolate this way is that steam or that water from underneath is going to get hot. As it gets hot, it's going to create steam. The steam is going to rise and hit the glass bowl. The glass bowl gets hot and melts our chocolate chips and we're gonna stir, okay? Now, we don't wanna get our chips too hot because we don't wanna burn them. And that's the luxury. We can turn the saute off and go back to the keep warm and it keeps our chocolate at a perfect consistency. We can add more chips, turn up the heat, melt it, stir it some more. 
it's a win-win process all the way around. Okay, for those of you who are just joining me, welcome. If I have newcomers, welcome. I'm Rebecca from devourdinner.com and I go live every Sunday teaching an Instapot or pressure cooking recipe. Welcome, I hope you'll follow along with Devour Dinner. Um, I know we have a lot of you from the Instapot 101 for Beginner group, as well as the Instapot 101 family group. Um, we have both of the admins here, Amy Main from the Instapot 101 for Beginners and Gail Bell from Instapot 101 family. They're fabulous, along with a lot of their moderators are here as well. They'll help answer questions. My husband is in the wings and he's watching these questions because I want to answer as many of them in real time as possible so that you guys can duplicate exactly what I'm doing right here. So as our chocolate chips are heating up, I want to talk to you about these molds, okay? Now, these circular half dome molds are the craze, meaning everybody's trying to get their hands on them and they're super hard to come by. Um, I have them and I love them. They're made with a really soft silicone, okay? Like I can wad this up in a ball. That's how soft it is. These work excellent. I would suggest you order them. These, I got three of them and I spent like $9, $10 or something on them. Um, and they're on Amazon. I've got a link for one of them. They're not in stock right now, sadly enough. Um, but I can drop some. So this is an affiliate link if you guys are interested. Um, but these are about two inches in diameter. That seems rather small, but I'll tell you what, those are our favorite sizes and they're very simple to use. I'm gonna demo these today. I'm also gonna show you how to use your egg bite molds for your pressure cooker. Um, and this is what you're seeing in a lot of these Facebook groups. People are testing it because they can't get a hold of these. So I'm gonna show you how to do these. Now, because I wanted to test all kinds of things, I also have this ice cube tray. These are the square ice cubes. This also works, okay? They do make them larger than the egg bite molds. And to show you for comparison, I've got some fi finished products. Now, every time you touch these, it melts because the fi your fingers are warm. But I want to give you a size comparison real quickly. Here is the ice cube versus the ball, okay? There's quite a size difference. So, and then let me show you this one. Here's the egg bite. It's a lot smaller than the ice cube, okay? Now... Just a little fun fact. Oh, okay, question came in. My husband's telling me, can you use almond bark? You absolutely can use almond bark. Keep in mind, you have to really like almond bark. Some people don't enjoy eating almond bark and they don't want that in their hot cocoa. Others don't mind it, they love it. So yes, almond bark works. The white almond bark works well too. Um, it's actually white almond bark that I've drizzled on top because it melts so smooth and it's so easy to do. Um, now, the difference in sizes will mean the different size hot cocoa cups you make. Only makes sense, right? So the small balls, the ones you make with this, I usually do about an eight ounce cup of milk with the balls. If I'm using my egg bite molds, I'm gonna do about a 12 ounce cup of milk. And these big daddies, this is easily a 16 ounce hot cocoa cup, okay? Um, now, lots of fun things you can do with these hot cocoa molds with your add-ins. Of course, you can use marshmallows. Um, I'll tell you what, these are fun. If you've seen these in the store, they're made by Nestle and they're their truffles. So this is a peppermint filled truffle. At Thanksgiving, they had the pumpkin spice truffle. They're fabulous. And then my favorite, seriously, I cannot get enough of these. These are sea salt and caramel truffles. Oh, they're so good, you guys. Seriously, if you women are like me, or any of you who just adore chocolate and you need a little pick-me-up, these little bad boys are fabulous to have tucked in your drawer. 
because just a couple of them do the trick. All right. Ha -ha. My husband is telling me that one of you is asking about silicone cupcake liners, and the answer is yes. You can absolutely use the cupcake liners. Um, some of the liners that I've seen have the rippled edges. Those are a little bit harder to make sure you get everything filled in, um, so you just have to be a little bit more cautious, but you can absolutely use those. The nice thing about those is you don't have to fill them all the way to the top right? You could just fill them halfway. They're wider, but you don't have to make them as tall um, because those silicone cupcake liners are very flexible like these. So you can pop them out super simple. If you're using your egg bite mold, I've done it a couple of ways. I have filled all of them, including the center, and then I've done it where you don't fill the center. And it's actually easier to get out the egg bite molds if you do not fill the center one. And let me explain to you why. If you turn it over, I'm going to give you a top down so I can point this out. If you turn it over, at least on mine, they're all connected. Each of these egg bite molds is connected here. So they're not, it's hard to move things. And that center one becomes very hard to get out. Um, so I just find it easier to just use the outside ones when I'm doing the egg bites. Um, when I'm doing something like the ice cube tray, um, when they get all filled up, you want to make sure that you cut the chocolate on top so that it breaks apart so when you're pulling it out, you're, they're not all stuck together. Just little tidbits. But you'll see that as we dive in. Now, my chocolate chips are melting over here. We've got steam going on, so I'm just going to give this a stir. See if we can give you guys a top down. We're going to move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, there's a question about how to package as a gift um, and how to store it. So, and those might be two separate questions. Um, so packaging as a gift. I would use one of the cello bags is what I would use. Um, or I would get um, a box, like, you know, the fun boxes at Christmas time um, with all the other frostings and stuff like that. Um, and I would place them in the box. And I would encourage whoever I'm giving it to, to keep, store it in the fridge. Um, it doesn't need to stay in the fridge, but I find that they get, um, at room temperature, they're really soft. And so if somebody like a child were to pick it up, they could just break it. And so I just find if it's in the fridge, then it's just nice and it's kept hard. So, okay, as you see, all I'm doing is stirring this around to melt the chocolate. And you can still see there's quite a bit of chocolate chips in the mix. There we go. So what we'll do is as it's melting, you stir and before everything is melted, you're going to turn it off. The reason for that is because that residual heat will help melt the rest of those chips. And for those of you who are just joining, because I know we have so many of you, I'm going to drop the link to the recipe again. If you guys are on your desktop, feel free to open up that link so you can kind of follow along side by side and see what's happening. Okay, there's a little bit of those lumps left. I've turned it to keep warm, and I'm just going to stir it. Okay, a question's coming in about how far ahead can you make them um, before using them. Oh, you know what? I haven't tested that completely yet um, to give you a real good answer, but... Let me tell you that 
I don't see any reason why you can't make them and put them in the fridge um, and keep them there for a month. I don't see why it would be a problem. You're just freezing them. All right, let's see. Okay, another thing to be aware of. Let's go back here. Your molds need to be dry. Now, because I had all this steam come off, I'm seeing on my molds some of that condensation, and I don't want any water on my molds. So we're just going to dry these really quickly. For those of you just joining, welcome, welcome. I love having you here. So many new faces on here today. Please give this video a thumbs up. Give it a heart. Like it. Share it. Um, you guys are my heroes when you do that. When you go to my webpage and, and visit devourdinner.com, it means so much to me. Um, and I want to again thank Gail and Amy from Instapot 101 for beginners and Instapot 101 family. They're the admins along with their moderators. They are such a great asset and help to me as well. So thank you for coming and joining and answering questions because some days it gets a little crazy around here. All right. Now, we're going to use small spoons. You're going to end up using the backs of the spoons. We're going to put chocolate in the molds, and then we're going to use the back of the spoon to push it up on the sides. All right? Now, this chocolate is super thick, which is why I love it. Um, in your egg bite molds, I put in two big scoops of chocolate per hole, okay? So, let's give you guys top down. I want you guys to see exactly what I'm doing so you can really see how this works. We're gonna put a couple of them with chocolate. I don't like to fill them all up at first. And then I use the back of the spoon and I go clear to the lip. Super important that you go clear to the lip all the way around. You guys see that? And I go around a couple of times. Now you're not scraping it off. Remember you want to create kind of a well of chocolate, right? And I'm gonna go up close, see if you can see that. See how the bottom now, you can see the bottom? So it's really important to get a little bit more chocolate and put right down there at the bottom, okay? Because we've got to create that well all the way through. Now with egg bite molds, I find that I do need to do this twice. So we will fill these cavities up and then we will freeze them. That is the key. The key to this whole process is freezing. Okay, question that just came in is asking, do I spray it with a PAM spray or anything like that? I personally do not. And let me explain why. I don't want PAM spray all over my hot cocoa bomb. Like, I just don't want that right? Um, if you want to use a little bit of Crisco, even still, I know there's many of you who just made a cringy face. Um, and when I say a little bit, I mean a microscopic amount. The trick to getting these out, they have to be frozen. They just have to be freezing cold, not just, oh, they're a little cold. They have to be frozen. And as you can see, it goes fairly quickly um, to fill these cavities up. My husband's helping me off to the side today. I don't normally talk off camera for those of you who are joining me. I like to talk to you guys but I do want to answer all of these questions that we can in real time so that you guys can make these tonight if you want. You see how fast these go. So once I get this filled up, 
These are going to go in the freezer for 10 minutes. Set your timer, watch it, whatever you need to do, but do it for 10 minutes. And I'm being sloppy here because I'm going fast for you guys. Okay, once you have them all filled like this, take a second and look in all of them. Is there anywhere that needs to be just a little thicker, evened out a little bit? Make sure the bottom is covered in all of them. All right. These are now ready for the freezer. I'm going to pass these off to my husband so you guys can see that. We're going to get those freezy. Okay, now I'm going to show you these guys because you'll see, I want to show you the difference in how easy these pop out versus the egg bite molds. And because these are so flimsy, I put them on a little cookie sheet so that they have some stability. We're only going to use two of those. Now for these, I only just do one thing of chocolate in them because there's not a lot of room. So let me get some of these filled up and I'll show you how quick and easy it is. To do. You guys are fantastic. These questions are like phenomenal. I hope you guys are learning because these are so fun. I think it would even be fun as a gift to find a fun mug and put one of these inside of the mug and then wrap the mug in a, in a cello bag um, with a note and some instructions on adding hot milk. Okay, on these little silicone molds, because you have two halves that you're putting together, it is vital that you have the chocolate go all the way to the lip. You've got to have an even lip to stick them together, right? Only makes sense. So you wanna make sure that you get all the way up to the top. And don't hesitate to add a little more chocolate if you need it. Okay, another question. Can you store these in the freezer? The answer is yes. These ones right here, I pulled out of the freezer before I started the live and they'll go back into the freezer. Now these little guys won't need 10 minutes in the freezer because they're so small. These guys will take probably five minutes at the most in the freezer. And again, make sure that you look all around so that you've gotten those lip. And as soon as we're done with both sides, I'm gonna lift it up to the camera so you guys can see them.
your first time making these, I promise you, you guys are going to have chocolate everywhere. It's just the nature of the beast, I feel like. But the more you make them, the easier they become. So your first batch, you guys, I don't want you to be disappointed if you struggle or if some break getting out of the mold. In fact, I'm hoping today some of mine break because I want to show you what happens. Okay, the question, what size are these molds? These are a two inch, 2.1 inch diameter. And when they first came, I was like, ooh, that's small. Is this really gonna have a good cup of hot cocoa? I'll tell you what, I wish my picky eater were here because he loves hot cocoa. He picked it up from his grandma. He could have hot cocoa three times a day all year long. He just adores it. Um, the ch because you're using chocolate as well as putting powder inside, as well as, you know, adding in some mix-ins or things, it's plenty of chocolate. I'm telling you, it's like the perfect cup of hot cocoa. I like the small ones, but I also like an eight ounce glass. Um, so they seem small and I was super reluctant, but I've not had any problems. <laughs> it will work. Okay, the question is, have you tried putting any Bailey's Irish cream in and will it work? Um, it will work. However, if you're going to add liquid into any of these bombs, right, you want to make sure you have a good seal. So if you're doing the dome bombs and trying to add in any kind of liquid, you're going to struggle a little bit because... There's always little places that just don't get sealed off. And I know this because some of the powder will come out. And so I know there's a little tiny hole somewhere. Um, so, but in the egg bite molds, I think they'd work great. I haven't tried it. Um, you can use water. The question is, do you have to use milk or can you use water? They will work in water. Absolutely, but, but the water just has to be hot. Just like the milk, it has to be hot. Um, I just prefer milk because it makes it so much creamier. Um, you could also do like an almond or a soy milk as well, um, or water, whichever you prefer. All right. I think we have these. So what I'm checking right now is the rim. I want to make sure that I have it all the way up on the rim all the way around and that everything looks like it's covered and that there aren't thin spots. Okay. Now I'm going to pass this off and this is going to go into the freezer with the other ones. So our egg bite molds have been in the freezer about seven minutes. So they've got about another three minutes to go. I am going to add a little more chocolate, just so we have enough. I usually do two bags of chocolate chips when I make this. Um, okay, the question is how thin is the chocolate on the mold? I want to give you guys a measurement, but that's so hard to do. So I recommend doing the chocolate for the egg bite molds or for the ice cube trays or even for um, the muffin tins, doing it twice. Um, and when these come out, I'm going to take a look at them and see where they're thin. It's easier to tell where they're thin um, when they're hardened. And then what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more chocolate to wherever I need to add it, and we'll pop them back into the freezer if we need to. Um, and then we'll begin to fill those bombs so that you can see the final product on those. Let's see here. 
I want to drop some other links for you guys because they're super fun that I have on my website. So I've also made what I call fancy dipped marshmallows, and they're the square campfire marshmallows that you can dip in sprinkles or in crushed candy cane to put in your cups of hot cocoa, which is also super fun. And so I just dropped that link as well. And I also want to give you guys the link to how to make um, your own hot cocoa mix. So although we love to get some of this stuff, I also love to make my own. Um, like I mentioned, my picky eater will drink two and three cups of hot cocoa a day all year long. He got that from his grandmother and he adores it. And so when I make hot cocoa, I make it huge batches and I mix it up actually in a trash bag so that I can shake it and mix it all up. Um, and I will mix up enough that we have it for months. And that's that mix, that recipe link. Okay, the question is how many of the circular bombs, the little circular bombs, can you get with one package of chocolate chips? Um, gosh, I bet you could get 12 out of them. 10? 10 to 12? Okay, the question is, can you use a white chocolate chip, a, like a, a white chocolate, and add food coloring? Now, you can add food coloring. However, you want to make sure you're using a real good quality food coloring because when liquid gets mixed with chocolate, what it does is it seizes up. So if you're using the kind of chalk or the kind of um, food coloring that you would normally use, let's buy the cake section, you know, the little droppers, they're in the, they're four colors typically. Those are going to seize up. Um, you're going to want to use more of a, the silicone gels um, or the paste to mix into it. Just a thought on that one. Okay, Chris is asking a question. Do you check the temperature of your chocolate? Great question. Okay, who's here? Who's heard of tempering chocolate? Do we have hands coming up? So temper to temper your chocolate means to bring it up to a certain um, temperature degree. And depending upon if you're using semi-sweet chocolate or milk chocolate is going to depend on what temperature you want your chocolate at to temper it. So off the top of my head, I could be wrong here. A milk chocolate, you want at 88 degrees. A semi-sweet, you want at 90 degrees. Um, white chocolate is also right there in that, um, that temperature. You can check it with a thermometer, which is fabulous. Um, as you can see, I'm not checking this right now, but you can. Um, and it is a good practice to do so because then you have consistency. If you're going to use a thermometer, make sure you're using a high quality thermometer um, because that is so important. And as I say that, you guys are gonna ask, what is a high quality thermometer? You guys know I use a thermometer from Thermoworks. It's the Thermopen. You guys see me use it all the time um, because it's consistent. It's, it's, it's fabulous. I've worked with this brand now for almost two years and I love their Thermopen. And they always have sales for like 20% off and different things like that. So if you're interested in a Thermopen, send me a DM. Um, I will try to post later um, a link on my page. So if you're not following me, you guys, follow me. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Share. That's why I do this. Content is for all of you guys. So you guys can have this fun at home all by yourself, um, which is fabulous. <laughs> Linda says, okay, off topic. Bill, did you make the trees in the background? Love them. These trees, no, he did not. They're from Hobby Lobby. Love Hobby Lobby. Um, Amy says, I love my thermopen. Thanks, Amy, for chiming in on that. Um, I love it. Like, it's fabulous. And I'll post a link later. I don't have one of those ready. 
um, for you. Okay, the, the egg bite molds have now been in the freezer 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them out and then we're gonna check them. And I'm probably gonna spot check them and add a little bit more chocolate in places to make sure that we have a, a wide enough lip um, of that chocolate mold. So those are gonna come out and we're gonna start filling. Now, we're gonna use regular hot cocoa. Right here I have some of the candy cane hot cocoa that we love. These, if you can get a hold of them, these are the, I'm gonna pull this up. These are the Andes Mints Peppermint. So you guys are all familiar with the green mints from Andes, right? We love them, they're fabulous. These are the peppermint ones. They're super hard to come by. You can order them off of Amazon um, and get a hold of them because, let me just tell you, I love peppermint, but I'm not in love with the crunch, the hard crunch of candy canes. These melt. So in all my baking of my cookies, if I'm doing anything, I use these because I don't have that heart crunch on my teeth. All right, here we go. Okay. Whoops. Let's go like this. So here we go. We can see they're a little glossy. There's one of them that's not quite set up, this one right here. But... Well, there's a few touch-up spots that I'm going to do. Now, because these are frozen right now, any chocolate that I put in, it's gonna freeze relatively quickly. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. So don't put in a whole bunch, just put in kind of what you need so that you can get it where you need. And this sidewall needs a little bit more. I notice that my sidewalls don't get thick enough and it makes it really hard to get these out if these sidewalls aren't, don't have enough chocolate on them. So I will always come back and add to these sidewalls. The bottoms have plenty of chocolate on them because you guys all saw me put a little dollop right back in that bottom because I wanted to make sure that those were good and covered and getting frozen. All right, now we're gonna fill these up. So the question I have for you guys, what sounds good? What we're first gonna do is we're gonna put a nice big heaping spoonful, can you guys see this, in each cavity. Remember, in a normal cup of hot cocoa, you would end up using multiple spoonfuls, right? Because you want that good, yummy chocolate flavor. But when you're doing the egg bite molds, you have all the chocolate from the mold that's also going to add to your hot cocoa. So keep that in mind. You're gonna have plenty of chocolate of what you need. So I have now filled these about halfway or just barely over halfway. It really depends upon what else you wanna to add to it. I really love these, these small marshmallows. I used them when I made the peanut clusters last week for the Rocky Road. Because they're so tiny, you can fit them in. My children have told me that they prefer putting marshmallows in after the bomb to not include them in there because they want the other good stuff in the bomb. Um, 
So I'm going to do some of these with some of these peppermint Andes in each one. And we're just doing like a heaping teaspoon probably because we can. Now you don't want these to be over, right? Because we still have to put chocolate on top to seal the cavity. You can poke some of those down. I'm going to throw in a few of these marshmallows. And then I'm going to poke them down. Okay, there we go. See how cute those are? Like so cute. And you can put different things in them, right? You don't have to make them all the same. But just keep track of where you put what or it'll be a surprise, which is also super, super fun. Now, to seal it off, try to get the chocolate around the edges. Why? Because you've got to create a seal. You don't want to just blob it. We've got to cover the whole thing. So again, we're going to come back over and I will put a spoonful and I try to just drizzle it a little bit around the outsides and you'll see why here in just a second. I find that if my outsides are covered, it's a lot easier to fill in the middle. See how easy that was? So, I take a spoonful, and we're just going to drizzle along these outsides the best that we can, because that's what's going to create that seal, and then we're going to carefully spread it to seal it off. So if you were to use any of that Bailey's Irish cream, this is where you'd want to make sure that this is sealed up. Because anywhere that it's not sealed, it will all leak out. And to get these out, you have to flip them over. And you don't want that spilling out. Okay? All right, this one I didn't do as good of a job around the edges. And so I'm going to have to use a little bit more chocolate. Okay, here's a great question that somebody's asking. With the silicone molds, with these, you use two for a top and a bottom, right? So the question is, do you use two of these and put them together? And the answer is no, you do not. That would be a ginormous bomb. Um, you're just going to use the one. So, this right here, see how this looks like an egg bite mold? Do you see that? It's the egg bite mold. That was a good question. You, okay, question. Can you use chocolate peanut butter cups? Can you use Snickers? Can you use Milky Ways, Twix bars, Heath bars? You better believe you can use any one of those. You guys make this personalized for what you love, right? If you're way into that pumpkin spice flavor, use the pumpkin spice truffles from Nestle. You can still get them online if you can't get them in your stores anymore. Um, you absolutely can. Use what you like and fill up the cavity. Because there's plenty of chocolate in the shell for your hot cocoa. There's plenty of it. I promise you. Okay, the little marshmallows. You guys, listen. 
I'm telling you, those are so hard to find, and I'm like almost out of them, and I'm so sad. Um, I got those, believe it or not, at this little Amish general store. So if you guys live in Amish country, go and check them out. See if they carry them. Um, this cute little Amish general store is up in the middle of nowhere. It's about a three-hour drive from where I live. Off the beaten path, it's darling. Um, it's run by a family. They're fabulous. They're so kind. Um, and they sell all kinds of stuff. Like they sell jams and jellies and syrups and um, candies and, and, and fresh baked pies and pastries. And they have a sandwich bar. They make sandwiches along with all their beautiful flowers they sell and everything else. Like it is a wonderful, cute little Amish store. Um, and they sell those little, let me show you. I get them in a bag like this, um, and they're called micro marshmallows. So the thing that's cool about it is they're soft. These aren't the marshmallow bits that are hard. These are soft, which I love. All right, these are ready to go back in the freezer. They have got to freeze hard, 10 minutes minimum. Okay, the longer they're in there, the better. We need these to be rock hard to get out or they'll break. All right, I'm starting to get sticky over here. Imagine that. So let me just clean up a little bit of this space. You wanna pass those over? All right, the, the half shell ones are also ready to be filled. We're gonna fill those up super fast. Oh, the lint. Oh, do we still have one over there? <laughs> Darn it. Okay, so the question was, um, can you put a lint truffle in? Well, let's or, find out. Or could you melt it for the shell? Oh, or could you melt it for the shell? Oh, gosh, you guys. If you guys want to melt this for the shell, I want to hear about it. I seriously want to hear about it. You could absolutely melt these and use them for the shell. They'd be heaven heaven. Can you imagine how good those would be? Okay, now we are looking at these. Oh, let's turn these on. I'm going to work quick here. We're going to make sure that we're all covered in all the areas and things are looking good. So now let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to take these out and I want to show you how simple and easy these are to take out compared to the egg bite molds because it's vastly different, okay? So what I tend to do is I just kind of stretch the edge just a little bit, just so it breaks away from around the lip, all right? And then, watch. These pop right out. Now, the goal is don't touch them for very long. Your hands are warm, these are cold. So you do wanna work kind of fast. Bill, will you get out a white plate? You're gonna microwave it. Um, do a minute and a half. Uh-oh, hold your horses. Okay, when I pulled that one out, it was a little thin right on the bottom. So I'm gonna take just a smidgen of chocolate and put it right there at that bottom because I don't want the bottom to crack. Super important. We're going to let that sit there for just a minute while I pull out the rest of these. But you can see how easy these come out, right? Because I can pop this up completely they come out so fabulously. Okay, question. Can you freeze these molds longer than 10 minutes? Yes. Um, okay, fun fact, you guys, you guys know I live in eastern Idaho. It's freezing. Um, temperature fresh really dropped last night. So as I was playing and making these and doing some fun stuff, I just set them out on my back deck on my barbecue because it was like 18 degrees out there. 
which was plenty cold enough to freeze them, and I just left them for about 30 minutes. Um, but you could put them in the molds, and you could leave them in the molds if you didn't need your egg bite mold for however long. It wouldn't matter. Okay, now, this is the crazy next step. Ah, I think we're okay. We didn't break any of them. I'm going to pull this one out now. Oh, Bill, will you freeze this one just a little bit? So this one that I added more chocolate to, when I press on the bottom, you guys can't see it, but it's not firm. So I'm going to pop this back in the freezer before I pull it out so that we can still use it. Get yourself a plate, okay? And what we need to do is we need to make these balls flat. So here's the trick. And it's super hard to do because your hands are hot and you don't want to melt things. So you're going to take one of these domes, you're going to put it upside down on this plate, and you're just going to let it melt for like two seconds, and then you're going to turn it around, and then you're going to bring it back and set it down, all right? You're only gonna do six of these. Do half the batch at once. Do not melt them all at once, and I'll show you why. So we're just gonna put that on there. We're gonna turn it, pick it up, put it back. So just that little bit will melt that ringed edge, flatten it so it's smooth, so that we can get a nice edge to seal the two balls together. So this plate we microwaved for about a minute and a half is all that we did. Notice I'm not holding the chocolate while it's melting. You want to hold it the least amount of time possible because your fingers will leave fingerprints and will melt. All right, we've got six of these ready to go. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna fill them. And I'm gonna surprise one of my kids. I have one of these Lindor chocolates that we're gonna add in here. So you're gonna add a little bit of hot cocoa mix. Now, be careful when you're adding your cocoa powder because remember, you just melted the ring around the edge. You don't want cocoa powder in that ring. So it's nice and easy and slow. And this is, as you can see, a lot smaller amount of hot cocoa mix. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this one Lindor chocolate that we happen to have left, and I'm gonna put it right into one. The cool thing is, because we're making a dome, it's okay if it sits up tall. Like, it's just okay. And then I wanna make some sea salt and caramel. So we're gonna open up this bag, and you guys have seen these little truffles, they're just darling little bites. And we're just gonna put a few of these in each one. And I'm putting like four or five in each one, it looks like. Kind of tucking them in. There we go. You guys want to see those close up? There they are. All right, now to seal them, super easy. We're gonna do the same thing. Our plate is still plenty hot. We're gonna make the edge flat by melting the edge and we're gonna stick it right on top center. And because it has that melted edge, it's going to adhere the chocolate to each other. It's fabulous. So 
These ones won't melt as quickly because the plate has cooled off just a little bit. Oh, that wind door is too hot or too tall. All right, we got to get that wind door down there a little bit. See if that works. There we go. Do you want to get me another plate heating up? Okay, fun fact. When you want to put a drizzle on top, you have got to make sure these are frozen. If I was to put a drizzle on top right now, can you guys guess what would happen? It's happened to me. The hot almond bark or white chocolate will melt right through the dome and crush it. So these have to be frozen solid before you put any drizzle on top. It's just how it is, you guys. So before you do a drizzle, throw these back into the freezer. When you're ready to drizzle, pull them out and put your drizzle right on top, and they'll be perfect. Bill, will you grab me the other one in the freezer, the, the circle? Because it should be frozen now. All right, you guys, you guys are fabulous. Still sticking with me if you're just joining. Give me a heart, give me a thumbs up. It really does make a difference when you guys do give a thumbs up and you give a heart and you share. Um, it makes a world of difference all the way around. Um, I am a small business and I earn money by you guys going to my site. There's advertisements on my site. I know you don't like the ads. Guess what? I don't either, and other bloggers don't either, but it's the way that we earn money so that we can provide you free content. And so that little bit that it takes you to scroll helps me so that I can continue to do these live videos and put recipes up on my website. It's okay, I don't need it. Somebody asked if you could put a plate over your instant pot and stick your foot on your milk. Oh, that's a great question. So the question is, can you put a lid over this bowl to keep it warm? The answer is, please don't do that. No. Put a plate to melt the chocolate like this. Oh, plate. yeah, you could if it was a big enough dinner plate. Okay, so what the question is, if you had a large enough dinner plate that fit on top, I wouldn't do it. And let me tell you why. Anytime you seal off what's warm underneath, you're going to create condensation. Condensation is a liquid and will drop back into your chocolate. If you were to remove your chocolate bowl and then put the plate here, you could absolutely do that. But you would need to move your chocolate bowl first and then you could set a large dinner plate on top to warm and use that and that would work. Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna put these well, no, we're not. These will go back in the freezer so that they can chill. So we're going to push those off to the side. Will you get milk going? Now, to heat up your milk, you can do it on your stove over a medium heat. Um, you could do it in your Instapot. If you were to remove the liquid in here and you were to heat it up in there, you can also heat it up in the microwave as well. But I want to show you how we do a chocolate bomb. So we're going to heat up some milk really quick so that we can show you what I do to make the chocolate bomb and how fun it is. We want to go full circle here. Um, while our milk is heating up, I'm going to, we're leaving our um, egg bite mold hot chocolate bombs in the freezer as long as possible. So I really need those to get good and hard before we try to take those out or they break. 
And it's kind of sad when they break, but it's also kind of fun because it's memories. Um, and I don't want you guys to be discouraged when they break. Usually when they break, it's because they're not rock hard and you need them to be rock hard. So 10 minutes is minimum, but if they can be in there 15 minutes or longer, it's even better, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna clear up some of this. Again, if you guys have not followed me at Devour Dinner here on Facebook, please consider doing so. That's where you'll see all my latest recipes. You'll also find out um, if I'm going live on Sunday, I typically go live at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Sunday with an Instapot pressure cooking recipe. Um, next week, the plan is to do a real meal, a real um, dinner item where the last couple of weeks we've been doing treats and chocolates, um, and I want to do food food. Um, so next week, that's kind of the plan. I was going to do that this week, but so many of you requested, will you please show us how? And I was just tickled and thought, why not? Let's show you guys because it's so fun. <laughs> Dee says, if they break, you can eat the pieces. Okay, let me tell you. So I've been making these for weeks. I got these egg molds weeks ago and I've been playing with them and, and then realized you couldn't buy the molds anymore. And so I've been playing with the egg bites and the ice cube trays and they break, right? But it's just hot cocoa powder and marshmallows and chips or whatever. And there's no reason why you can't scoop that up and put that into your cup of hot milk, right? Tastes the same. Um, so don't let a broken hot chocolate bomb ruin anything because it will only build memories, you guys. Seriously, it will only build memories. So keep that in mind um, when you're making these. I'm going to give you guys, let's see here. Let's show you these again. So this is my plate of the, the small balls right here. These are the egg bite molds right in here. And then these are the ice cube trays. Again, these larger ones, the ice cube trays, you're going to want probably 16 ounces for your hot cocoa. So that's a grande, a tall, right? Um, the egg bite molds, you're going to want to do... Um, probably 12 ounces, gives a nice balance of the chocolate hot cocoa to the milk ratio, unless you want a super thick and rich um, hot cocoa, then do it with eight. Um, the bombs, I prefer to do with eight ounces. Um, that's what I love, personally. Now, we've got some milk ready. So, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Okay. Let's give you guys that top down because I know you love it. I did not get this camera centered today. Make sure you have your spoon handy for whatever you need. You're going to drop your cocoa bomb in the bottom of your cup first. Don't drop it and crack it because there's not much fun in that. If you want, put a little bit of the milk in the bottom first and then put your hot cocoa bomb in and then you're going to pour the milk on top. I like to pour the milk kind of slowly so that I can see the bomb breaking open and I see that hot cocoa mix rise to the top with all the treats and treasures that are inside before I give it a good stir. And it's as simple as that. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna put just a little bit of milk down in the bottom. I hope this is warm enough. And I'm just gonna use the spoon here to drop it in, right there. And then we're just gonna pour this hot milk right on top. And you'll notice that it just will start cracking and melting. There we go. This milk is not hot enough. I need it lots hotter than that. Okay, you guys, hot milk makes a difference. So this is melting, here we go. It's finally opening up. So there's all of our mini marshmallows and the chocolate. 
and then we're going to give it a stir. There you go. That's as easy as it is. Now, make sure you stir that up and make sure that that milk is hot so that it melts your chocolate. We're going to heat up the rest of this milk, get it even hotter, and I'm going to do another one for you. And then we're going to pull out those um, egg bite molds and I'm going to show you how to get them out. Um, again, I'm waiting till the very end because I want those good and hard. <laughs> Linda says that's awesome. Julie says how fun. Uh, JK says yes, add booze. Um, Deborah says, can you do these with coffee? Well, you could put coffee in there. You absolutely could. But I think you're meaning something else. So would you clarify? Um, okay. Sigrid says, what do you drizzle on top? So to drizzle on top, I will cut up some white almond bark. You know how it comes in a big brick? And I will shave off like two of those little squares um, and melt that. And then I use a fork to drizzle. And that's how I get the lines, is because the tines in the fork will create it. And if I move the fork back and forth, it'll just create that. Remember, you are adding the drizzle when your bombs are frozen. If you add the drizzle when the bombs are not frozen, it will melt your bombs and destroy them. I promise you. Okay? So keep that in mind. Okay. Bill's telling me that this next cup is perfectly hot. Ready? He says it's steaming. Oh, yeah. That's a lot better. I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom. And then... Grab another spoon. We're going to drop this one in. And then I'm going to pour on top. Oh, yeah. See, this one, I don't know if you can tell on camera. There we go. See how the marshmallows are already popping up? That's the difference between using hot milk and not. And then once again, get in there and stir so that all of that chocolate yumminess melts. You can always add more marshmallows on top, like my children say. They want more marshmallows than this. You can add whipped cream, whatever you want. But these bombs are perfect, literally. I have drank so many cups of hot cocoa lately to get not too sweet and the perfect to enjoy a good cup, because there's nothing worse than overly sweet, right? And of course, you can tone down the sweetness by using semi-sweet chocolate or even um, like a bittersweet, a 72% or a 60% um, chocolate as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, Bill, will you grab me first a big white dinner plate? And then... He's going to get out those egg bite molds, and we're going to pull them out. Are you guys ready? Keeping my fingers crossed? So you're going to want, whether it's a cutting board, a dinner plate, something that when you open up the molds you have on your surface, okay? All right. Here we go. Now. You want to make sure that you pull it away from that edge, right? Because chocolate gets sloppy. It gets messy. Let me give you guys side by side. So we're going to just kind of pull it away, open it up the best that we can. It does make a difference, I promise. Okay, if you do not have strong fingers, this is going to be difficult for you. Um, because even for me, it can get tricky. And that's why I want you guys to see. Remember, the silicone is not as pliable as the little round ones, so it's harder. The ice cube ones are even harder sometimes to get out to, so keep that in mind. Okay, then all I do is I flip it over. We've loosened the edges, and I'm going to use my fingers. And I'm going to pull up under here while I use the palm of my hand 
on the base of the egg bite mold, okay? So I'm gonna push with the palm of my hand and I'm gonna get my fingers up underneath to pull it back so I can pop it out. And this is why it's got to be frozen. So I literally have my fingers up in there and look, it just pops out, okay? We're gonna put that right there. There we go. It is messy on your fingers, guys, but the key is to get your fingers up underneath here and your palm pushing down or your thumb. Go. All right, we're four for four. There we go, we got another one. You guys, I was hoping we'd have one. Okay, they all came out perfect. You can see my plate is a mess. All of the extra chocolate around the silicone mold has dropped off. My fingers have all of that chocolate kind of melted around it but there you go this plate is a disaster will you hand me one more clean plate for these all right here you go you can certainly clean up these edges if you want remember you clean up those edges by a hot plate. That will easily melt off those edges if you want them cleaned up. And then to drizzle, you're gonna use like some white almond bark or white chocolate chips and you can melt just a small portion of those. Um, use a fork to drizzle on top. But remember, they have to be frozen. So where these just came out, you, I could drizzle these really fast, um, but you're gonna have to be super quick. So in the meantime, I would put them in the freezer just to stay nice and chilled. And that's how you guys make hot chocolate bombs with an egg bite mold. Pretty cool, huh? You guys, I think so. Like, I love this craze. I think it's so fun. It's so festive. Get your guys some fun mugs. Like I said, make it a gift. I found these cups, this, this mug, um, at Walmart. And these will fit these larger inside of it. And they're just fabulous. What a cute gift to wrap up in a cello bag with a bomb inside and a note with a little instruction, a little tag and a ribbon to deliver to teachers or neighbors or coworkers, something fun for the holidays. Great gift all the way around. All right, you guys, listen, those of you that are still here, I adore you. I absolutely adore all of you that have been on today, um, who've given this video a thumbs up, who've given it a heart. You guys are my people, and it's because of you that I get to do this and come back every week with a new recipe to help teach you guys tips and tricks for your Instapot or your pressure cooker. Now, with that said, I wanna tell you guys something. Milfy, you guys have heard of Milfy. They make the crisp lid, which is the air fryer lid that goes on pressure cookers. You can use my code DEVOURDINNER, all caps, one word, and pre-order the crisp lid, which they, on their website says it'll ship on the 21st. Those are fabulous. I love my crisp lid. Um, I encourage you guys to order. It's like super cool and so worth it. I'm going to drop the link and the little reminder here as well. But the, the code is devour dinner, one word, all caps, for $10 off your purchase. And here's a tip. If you want to order two crisp lids or you want to order a multi-pot and a crisp lid, do two separate orders and use the code both times. You'll get $10 off each of those. Score, right? Big deal. So make sure you order from milfy.com. The link is now in the comments. And then one more thing. I'm still doing my Christmas card exchange for
for any of you who want to send me a Christmas card, I will send you one too. And they are super fun. So send me a Christmas card. Include the little return label of your address. If you happen to have those, it just makes it easier on me. Um, super fun. I sent out another batch of Christmas cards yesterday. I'm loving all the cards that I'm seeing, and I want to get more from you guys. So send me a card, and I will send cards back to you because it's fun. Super fun tradition. So a question that just came in, can you watch past videos? And the answer is absolutely. The cool thing about this is these are archived on Facebook. If you go to my page, Devour Dinner, here on Facebook, at Devour Dinner, there's a tab for videos. Click on it. I have all the videos that I have done now for almost two years. And you'll see the progression and all the tips and tricks of everything. Um, those are there. Watch them. Get your ingredients, do it side by side. You can pause the video so that you can keep up um, or whatever works for you. But they're all there available in the video section, um, archives, so you can go back to them. And I try to label them with what the recipe is so that it's easier to figure out for you guys. Um, but there are tons of recipes there. Um, I've also done, for all of you new to pressure cooking, if you just got a new pressure cooker for Thanksgiving on the Black Friday deals, um, there's also a video on doing your water test, um, making hard-boiled eggs, and some of those easier, simple beginner recipes so you can kind of learn how to use your pressure cooker and gain confidence. That's why I do these lives. It's to show you guys and build your confidence so that you too can be making incredible recipes at home that you feel confident about. And they're so easy to do, and I'm happy to answer questions and help you along the way. I love to see photos that you guys have made and watch your progression of what you're willing to try and do. Like, it just melts my heart because that's why I'm here. So that was a great question. Uh, let's see. Karen says, I have two pots and the air fryer and the roaster. You guys have all listed everything you have. Um, Amy says, the earlier videos are fun. I have four pressure cookers. They're all six quart. People ask all the time, why do I only have the six quart? I like the size. Um, it's, it's, a small, it's a perfect size. It's not too heavy. The eight quart is bigger. It's bulkier. It's heavier. I don't like the weight. I like the size of the six quart. Um, I don't need four pressure cookers, but typically we have two going fairly often in our home. Um, sometimes three. If it's a holiday, a big meal, I'll pull out all th three of them or four of them, but they rotate around. And that's what I love. Okay, you guys, only one last little tidbit. Let's make sure I've got everything. Let me give one more shout out to Gail from Instapot 101. Um, Instapot 101 family and Amy from Instapot 101 for beginners. If you're not in either one of those groups, go join. They're fabulous. Um, they're the admins of both of those groups and their moderators have been here as well. So a big shout out, a big thank you to those ladies who join in and help answer questions and keep things flowing. Um, a shout out to my husband who's off camera, who's been funneling me questions today and making all this possible. This is a longer live, I do apologize but it's just what it took to show you guys. I hope you can duplicate this and I wanna see your photos. So when you make them, post it and tag me. I want to see the videos posted into Instapot 101, post it onto my feed, direct message me, let me see them and I'll post them in my Insta stories and share because this craze is so fun and I wanna see your success and I wanna cheer you on and I hope it makes memories for the holidays and everything that you do, because that's like way cool. Um, super, super fun. All right, one last tidbit. It's gonna get noisy here. Finn is gonna start barking um, because we have visitors that just walked in. But you guys, I need your help. There's a bunch of you on right now. I need you to all listen up. I need your help because you guys are my army and you guys have helped so much. I need all of your well wishes and prayers and pixie dust, and everything. Tomorrow, in the morning, bright and early, I go in for surgery. 
I know, a lot of you, your jaw just dropped. Um, those of you who have been following me and who've been on this journey, you guys know I've been super sick um, and recovering with a lot of things. Tomorrow morning, I'm going in for surgery. Um, I'm going in for back surgery. This was planned. It was actually planned before I got COVID. Um, and so we are just pushing it in right at the end of the year. Um, and that is happening tomorrow morning. So your thoughts, your prayers, your well wishes, pixie dust, all the good vibes for a positive and great surgery. I would appreciate it. Um, cause you guys are awesome and I just so appreciate you. Um, all right, let me see if there's any last questions. All right, all these wonderful players. I know I can count on you. It's because of you I have this army of people behind me and it gives me the confidence because surgeries are scary, especially back surgeries. Um, I will be in the hospital overnight, um, possibly two nights, but we'll see. And the plan is I'll be back here next Sunday with another fantastic recipe for you guys. So make sure that you tune in. I'm wondering if we might get a little surprise visitor really quick before we sign off. Emily? Okay, you guys want a surprise visitor? You guys ready? It's been a while since we've had a surprise visitor. Do you guys know who the surprise visitor is? Well, let me tell you, Little Miss. Little Miss now is three and a half months old. She is teeny. She is petite. She is a little dolly. Um, and she's adorable. Of course, I think so because she's my granddaughter. Um, and you guys have not seen pictures lately. And they just walked in the door for some family time, so I'm going to steal her. It looks like, is she awake? Okay, she's awake. I'm going to grab her. You guys, hold, hold on. Hi, dear. Here's little miss, you guys. This is my granddaughter. Isn't she beautiful? She is, like, so alert. She'll smile, do all kinds of things. And we just adore her. But she's so petite. Um, I guess I've forgotten how little babies can be. This little, this little gal is still wearing newborn clothes or just barely into three-month clothes. And she's just, everything swamps her. But she is, like, thrilled. Can you say hi? All right, you guys. Thanks for being here, for supporting me. And I'm going to let you guys go have the rest of your Sunday once again, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up or a heart, please do so. If you've shared it, you, I just bless you. I just love you. It, it helps me so much. So thank you. Thank you. You guys have a fantastic week. Remember to be kind to one another. Find joy in the journey and make memories. Even when your hot cocoa bombs break, make memories because it's worth it. All right, you guys. I love you. Appreciate you. Have a fantastic week. And we will see you next week. I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. We'll see you later. Bye. You say bye-bye? Bye. -bye. bye.